is up today guys today i'm going to be doing something a little different from the usual videos i post today i'm going to be reading the protologue of this book i've been reading called primitive war by ethan petis now this book is basically about where these guys in the vietnam war encountered dinosaurs pretty simple concept now the reason for reading this book is and the reason for me making this video is because I wanted to do some theories I had that I wanted to share with you guys. So, without further ado, let's get started. This is the Protologue of Primitive War 1, Operate Undertow. Protologue, September 23rd, 1968. Vietnam's natural splendor was plagued by war. Peaceful jungles were transformed into hellish labyrinths where soldiers lost their minds and lived to horrifying firefights. Fear and paranoia pulled apart the threads of human morality. The Tent Offensive, the Viet Cong, and North Vietnamese Army's biggest push against North American forces in southern Vietnam set entire cities ablaze. Massacres were committed every day by American forces and Viet Cong alike. Many miles north of this conflict, beyond the demilitarized zone that separated North and South Vietnam, lay an ancient jungle valley seemingly untouched by the violence. An open of thicket treetop canopies blanked the rolling hills within the valley. A slithering black river beheaded the foot plains of the basin and reflected the luminous moon on the starless night. Heavy clouds slumped over the crazy mountain peaks and drifted down to the slopes. War drums shook the air, warning the jungle of an approaching thunderstorm. Beneath the canopy, lost among these countless labyrinths, trunks of canuck and durin trees, a lone soldier named Kendrick Anderson ran for his life. Kendrick crawled madly along the dripping wet thickets, his pale face stained with panic. The darkness consumed everything beneath the multi-layered canopy. Kendrick was blind, stumbling over creeping roots and low-slung vines. The broad leaves of banana trees slapped his face like frigid hands. His boot caught a stumbling log and fell face-first into the carpet of rotting plant matter and tree bark. He dragged himself through the soil and climbed to his feet, whimpering like a beaten dog. How long had he been lost in the valley? It had only been a week, but every day felt like separate lifetimes, filled with harrowing new challenges to test his ability to survive. He was a member of the Green Barrett, one of the U.S. Army's masters of counter-guerrilla warfare, but the valley proved too much for him. He was lucky to be alive and somewhat sane. The rest of his platoon hadn't been so fortunate. When Kendrick's platoon first marched into this obscure valley, they had been sure of themselves. They thought their mission was just another walk th in, the, in the park, evading Viet Cong and dangerous wildlife. That was until the first of his 12-man platoon had died. The first man to die was taken at night. Kendrick had awoke to find his friend, Maynard missing in action. All he could find left on his squad mates was a few ragged bites of skin and a trail of blood leading deeper into the wilderness. It happened to another man the following night, and again the night after that. Sometimes they were taken while they slept, other times during patrols. Kendrick would be walking this platoon, and when he looked over his shoulder, another one of his fellow soldiers would be missing without a sound or sign of what happened. They stared to suspect that they were being followed by a man-eater, like a tiger or an ascetic black bear. They all knew the legends, the stories passed among soldiers while eating their rations around the fire. The Vietnamese spoke of demons that haunted the jungle, obscure children that unsuspected vil Kendrick thought it made sense that vengeful demons would try their hand at abducting young Americans. His friends laughed at him for thinking so, but that was until they saw their killer late one night. The creature was something Kendrick had never seen before, and wished to never see again. 
It was fast, quick, and nearly impossible to see spot among the foliage. There were four of the creatures in total. Despite his platoon's best effort to fight back, the predators were too vicious and cunning. During the first encounter, three of Kendrick's squad mates have been slaughtered. He could still hear the bones cracking, the wet ribs of organs being torn from their sc his screaming friends. Kendrick barely slept after the attack. It didn't take too long for Kendrick's squad to fall apart. Somebody lost the radio during the attack, another man lost his rifle and rucksack. They became lost with maddening endless jungle, disconnected from their only chance of escape. Two more men were taken the following night. Only Kendrick and two others were left. They had to continue pushing north and attempt to complete their mission. The deeper they ventured into the valley, the more unnatural the jungle seemed to become. Hidden beasts howled in the night. Immense creatures as big as planes flew through the sky. They even discovered the skull of an elephant that had been crushed by the jaws of a powerful behemoth. One morning, Kendrick discovered the body of one of his last squ remaining squad mates outside their campsite. The young man's throat had been torn open and his stomach was eviscerated. Kendrick hadn't heard of a thing. He had slept through the attack. His other friend, his only other remaining squad mate, committed suicide shortly after. And now Kendrick was alone, running for his life through the jungle without any supplements of a plan or hope for survival. He knew he was being hunted. Death lurked in every shifting shadow, hidden within the bliss sound of a twig breaking or a rustle of leaves. He couldn't see or hear the creatures, but he knew they were there. Kendrick could feel their cold eyes crawling over his bruised, beaten body. They were probably licking their teeth in anticipation, waiting for the perfect moment to tear into him while he was alive and screaming. But he wouldn't let that happen. God, no, he wouldn't let that happen. A thunderclap shook the trees, and almost... In immediately, a wave of ra heavy rainfall crashed through the canopy. A stor the storm overhead, Kendrick senses. He squinted at the rain, pecking his eyes. The drone of a pattering rain filled his ears. He stumbled through the undergrowth, his hands held before him to keep him from running into tree trunks. As Kendrick walked, he noticed the trees were becoming more spacious, and the undergrowth was shrinking back. Based on his training, he knew that he was approaching a waterway. If he could find a, the river or a stream that could follow the current towards the southern end of the valley, where his commanding officer, General Jero, had a small military base, Kendrick felt a smile tremble on his lips. Maybe he was going to make it out alive. There was a flash of lightning. Everything was painted in, in white light and tracing of shadow. In the brief instant, he saw the horrifying outline of the, a creature gliding through the undergrowth like an apparition. Thunder clapped above his head, and the jungle was thrown back in darkness. Hendrix stood frozen in d the downpour. He started wa stared wide-eyed into the abyss and slowly sank to his knees. It was out there, circling him. He dimly hoped that it couldn't see or smell him in the rain. Maybe it was just as blind as he was. And then, through the constant thrum of rain, he heard it. Heavy breathing, slowly coming closer. Kendrick jumped to his feet and sprinted through the forest. Weaving around tree trunks, jumping over logs and rocks, his boot fell off and he slowly winced with each step. Twigs and stones tore apart the tender flesh on his rotten foot. Ten Kendrick staggered, shaking beneath the icy needles of rain, propelled by his surging adrenaline. He heard the rain relentless assault against the surface of the river. He was getting closer to escape. Somewhere, the predator was watching. He could feel it. Kendrick's bare foot slipped through the mud and he fell forward with a wet smack. His sense of fight or flight possessed him. He dug himself his hands into the marshy turf and dragged himself towards a thick stream and swamp vegetation. Kendrick pulled himself over a slope and he slid into the frigid fr water. The cold shocked him and he thrust his head up out of the water, panting and shivering. 
There was a flash of lightning and he saw a spider-like mangrove tree surrounding him. The jungle seemed empty, devoid of life. That meant it was nearby. Kendrick knew he couldn't run anymore. Each breath he took burning through his lungs. His body was nim from the cold, and his heart struggled to keep the thick blood pumping in his veins. It was time to hide. He cautiously waded through the chest-deep water towards the mangroves. Kendrick crawled to, into the mangrove cage of roots and peered out at the black mirror of the water's surface. It appeared he had fallen into a pond. His only chance at escape had been a pipe dream. All he had to do was sit and wait, shivering and gripped by terror. <laughs> through the roaring storm, Kendrick could hear footsteps slowly padding through the, at the water's edge. Each footstep was carefully placed, methodically and silently. He heard the predator sniffing the air, followed by a long, low growl. Leaves brushed softly against feathers and leathery skin. The creature was circling the pond, trying to locate Kendrick in the storm. Kendrick carefully tucked himself further back into the mangrove's den and s stared at the water-dapping surface. He h held his breath until his lungs felt sucked dry. There was a flash of lightning. He saw the silhouette of the creature reflected on the water's surface. It was heavily disordered, but Kendrick could clearly see the outline of the animal's body. It was taller than a man, with straight tail and muscular limbs. The creature raised its long snout, sniffed the air. The hooked claws flicked in anticipation. The creature's jaws parted into a toothy, rumbling snarl. It was only ten feet away. Kendrick trebled uncontrollably. Tears were lost with the rain on his face. A pitiful cry crawled from his lips, like a worm, he and he clicked his hands over his mouth to keep quiet. Urine flowed freely between his legs. Kendrick could hear the footsteps approaching slowly. The creature was taking its time. It knew he had nowhere left to run. Kendrick's eyes began to adjust to the darkness. He saw the muscular legs of the creature standing before him. The sickle-shaped claw flexed and dug into the earth. Kendrick was petrified with fear. He could no longer think or comprehend his reality. He could only watch as the creature crouched in front of him and stared back with its cold, calculating eyes. The creature spread its arms around the mangrove roots, cloaking the den with feathers. Its talons scraped against the root bark. One last embrace to ensure there would be no escape. The creature's eyes glowed yellow in the darkness. The feathers muffled the sounds of the storm. Kendrick could only hear his own whimpering and the slow, steady breathing of the animal. It was so dark that he could barely see the jaws of the creature opening to reveal serrated teeth. The animal's hot breath, rancid in with decay, washed over him. Kendrick could feel desperately catch his throat. P please The creature's head shot forward and snatched Kendrick's throat in its jaws. The animal shook him violently from side to side, ripping the flesh from off his neck like tissue. Hot blood ran down Kendrick's torso and the creature let go. Kendrick fell backwards, screaming, and the fiery pain flared through his body as the town sliced his stomach open. The creature was savage, growing and indifferent while Kendrick shrieked in pounded its snout with its fist. In his last feeling moment of consciousness, Kendrick watched as the creature buried its snout into his abdomen and tugged out coils of intestines. The last thing he felt was his own harness death rattle boring through the raging holes in his throat. This was n not the war he knew. Now that was the prologue of Primitive War. If you watch my videos, you sh I will have a couple new videos on the topic coming out soon. And also, the video I promised to come out on Saturday is still happening. Watch out for that. See you guys later.